enchantée. Hi, welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and my husband Jack is hanging out Hi. with me, mainly because there's coffee involved. Coffee and, and a good looking woman, I am there. Stop. Every time. <laughs> Actually, it's because we're talking about travel, and he loves to travel as much as oh I do. Gosh. This is something that literally brought us together. It was how we knew that we were going to be so great together. Yeah. We're coming up on 21 years. 21 years. The travel yeah. and two pair of great legs, that's what brought us together. Two pairs means yours too? Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen them in a dress? <laughs> wow. No. Actually, I haven't. <laughs> um, so, before you run away... Um, <laughs> Let me encourage you to hit subscribe because this is not just one video for the week. We are hoping that this will be a series of five and it's gonna be really fun. We're gonna be talking about Paris and homes and inspiration and all this fun stuff for the whole week. And at the end, we're going to be doing a live event in which you can also join us. If you go over to Facebook and join our Inspired by Me group, that's what we'll be doing our live on Friday. Yeah. So. so make sure you're here for the entire week. These yeah. hacks, so we're talking today about hacks, right? How yeah. many? 10 we hacks. We've got 10 hacks. 10 Parisian hacks. People that knew us when we first got married, we actually went to Paris before we were even together. We went with a group of friends and um, we, you know, bought Eiffel Towers and we bought all these souvenirs. An Eiffel Tower lamp in the living room. Even a pencil sharpener. <laughs> oh my gosh, we did. Yeah. We had all kinds of things that we thought were Parisian, but they were all, you know, souvenir kind of things. And so these were things that after years of traveling over there again and again, we realized, oh, now that we had kids, we couldn't stay in hotels. We ended up staying in people's homes and we had a completely different view of what it was like to be a Parisian and have that lifestyle. Yeah. So the hacks today come from years of that travel and Truly, we're very grateful to all the people that let us stay with them over the years because now we get to share these with you. And a lot of times people will ask us, how did you know to do that? What made you think to put something on the mantle like that? And I'm like, well, that just came because we stayed somewhere and I learned it from them. And so that experience changed our, really our thoughts 100% on French design. And even honestly, I think it changed a lot of the way we approach design in general. It does, it for sure did. And then we realized too, once we got on Pinterest and stuff, oh, it wasn't just them. This is actually like a Parisian thing. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna share with you today. Let's just dive straight in. Yeah. My hack number one is to mix old with new. I think that French people- She's talking about us. Is that what you're talking about? Obviously. <laughs> old, <laughs> I'm just realizing you just spent your entire life. You styled me that way. <laughs> <laughs> Silly man. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, anyways, um, Parisians, they have so much older architecture and they just have a knack for taking the older architecture, all those older details, and then just seamlessly mixing them with things that are modern. And I think so often we think that it has to be one or the other. You either have to have everything that's old or everything that's new and there's even in our place now, we're now that we've kind of got the baseline of everything, we're like, okay, we want to start adding in details, things that would make the house feel a little bit more historical because that's what we really miss from Europe. Yeah. When you have everything just so clean, that's where a lot of the, a lot of times if you're looking at photos and you're trying to figure out what it is that makes it so magical, a lot of times it's that architectural element that it's very hard for us to, affordably yeah. go back and add in so we yeah we, to... we see that all the time we'll see something we're like oh my gosh look at this house and you're like yeah because it has 15 yeah. feet of trim, crown, trim yeah. and crown on top and you yeah. know all and the, the doors have ornate things on them and it's like well yeah that modern sofa looks amazing on that yeah you could put a table from walmart in there to look outstanding because the architecture is so amazing yeah so true. how do you mix those things i think that's cool yeah i agree our hack number two is to think about the lifestyle. I, I talk about that all the time with my clients, whether they're buying and selling or they're decorating or renovating. The thing that we really love to focus on is the lifestyle. And I think that that was something that we really learned so much from not just our French friends. This is something that Europeans in general just really nail. Yeah. They, they really understand the life that they want. And maybe it's because it's thrust upon them. I mean, if you have a small apartment, 
and you need to get out, where are you gonna go? You're gonna go and sit in a cafe. And especially there where the lifestyle is that you go to sit for a few hours instead of, all right, you're, you're done, last sip, okay, here's your cup, let's go. Well, especially if you're in a thousand square foot apartment with a family or a 600 square foot apartment, not every, we, we see these big massive things on, in Architectural Digest, but most people don't live that way. Yeah. So the park, the cafe, those places, are an extension of the home. And I think that's how they approach it is, I don't want to sit in my 600 square foot apartment on a gorgeous day, I want to go to the cafe. Yeah, and so for those of us that don't have those cafes right outside our door, we might have to bring a little bit of that cafe life to our homes. And I think that's something that we can really learn is to create that sort of lifestyle that we want. I know we were recently having coffee out on the back deck, you know, and it's yeah. like, yeah, it's our deck. But we bring a little bit of that Paris cafe with us home because we don't have it right outside the door. And so a lot of times we need to add elements to our own homes in order to have that kind of lifestyle. Yeah. My hack number three is to use the mantle. This is probably my number one thing that I took away from that house that we stayed in, the apartment that we stayed in that last time. Yeah, that apartment. So it, it, just, it broke every rule that I knew about design because I remember walking in the house and went to the mantle. It was a gorgeous old French fireplace mm -hmm. mantle. And there were just like little treasures up there. It's like a shelf in the house. Like they really used the mantle. And it made you want to explore. And she was fine with it. Like that's part of the style is they want you, they want you to explore. They don't want it just to be everything is like right out there in front. They want yeah. you to be just little things, little stories and little It wasn't it was just fun. decorated. It was like, an, it was really an extension of the actual house. And yeah. I see a lot of times where even younger girls, they'll put, flowers on it and they'll have them drawing. I don't know, that's a different hack, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just always really use their, their fireplace as just a part of the home. And I think that probably comes down to the fact that they don't necessarily have so much space. Right. But I think that we can incorporate that idea into our own homes. I just think it's really cool. Yeah, I do too. Hack number four is to combine the ornate with the clean lines. I think that that's something that they really nail as well. Yeah, it does have to do with the architecture a lot of times, but not necessarily. They'll take an amazing chandelier that's super ornate and they'll pair it with something very clean lined and simple. Yeah, you see it a lot in chairs, especially like dining room chairs. You've got these overly ornate walls usually and the chairs kind of play off that. If they went all ornate, it would start to feel, it could start to feel a little stuffy or yeah. a little old. But that mix again of the lines and just kind of watching those lines. We don't have a lot in some of our rooms of any type of lines because the house is only 15, 20 years old. Yeah. So sometimes adding furniture for us that has curves yeah. and rounded edges and that type of stuff, it makes it feel, I don't know, it's just different. I think, I think so too. I think that you can, you can take it any which way you want it. Like if you really like an ornate chair, then maybe you pair it with a really simple table. Or if you really love that ornate chandelier, Again, clean line, simple on the table, and then you might want to think through, do you want everything in the room to be ornate? The chairs, the table, the rug, all of it, or mixing something in there that really just, I don't know, it just helps it feel clean line. And that's something that we're definitely doing in our own house. Yeah, definitely. Hack number five is probably not going to surprise you if you hung out here very much, but my favorite thing that I have learned from French people in general is to not make it too perfect. And, um, I, I think that that is the most amazing tip. I love that rule. <laughs> I really do. No, but I love it and it, it, so, it so correlates with, with fashion and the way they do fashion as well. Because it truly is this kind of, there's always a little undoneness to it. Just, there's a French look to design or to fashion. It also goes over to, to design so much. I think so too. And I think what's really fun about it is that we as Americans are trying so hard to make everything look perfect and what it looks like is that we've just tried too hard. The French are like, oh no, you don't want to look like you tried too hard. And it's like, oh, what? what? <laughs> so often my friends, I, I see where they're like, I don't know, something just doesn't feel right. And it's like, because everything is kind of flat and there's nothing imperfect in there. So a, yeah. a vase that's got texture to it, a, a blanket, that's a little bit worn, a little bit tattered. Like we normally take all that stuff out. We're trying so hard for it to be perfect, but actually the imperfections are what will make it feel approachable. Yeah. I think that's cool. Okay, style hack number six is to mix high and low. And no, I'm not talking about height here. You're talking about us. <laughs> I'm talking about high end pricing and low end. I think that 
the Parisians, mostly French Europeans, they just know how to shop well and invest in certain pieces. Parisians know that they would probably love to have everything high end, but they can't afford it. And they don't want to seem too pretentious. It's like a thing with them. They're like, oh, we don't want our friends to think that we think we're great. I don't know, it's like a thing. Like I hear that all the time, where they don't want to bring out the champagne that's too high end because they don't want their friends to think that they're trying to show off. And but they're I, also not drinking Kool-Aid every weekend. Like they really do enjoy no. champagne. They enjoy stuff like that. Yeah. But they may not always just bring out the most expensive bottle they have. Exactly. And that, that's kind of how they view their homes is that they like to have nice things and they like to splurge on them. And especially like, you know, a sofa or something that would be something that they would use for a long time. They might try to invest in that piece, but then they might make something from H&M or from the flea market. And that sort of like high-end mix is what makes it really interesting. Yeah. And it makes it unique and it makes it just them. And I think that they, they're adventurous and they want to be able to buy from wherever they go and not be limited that it has to be expensive in order for them to buy it. Yeah. I think that's something we can definitely Enjoy, I think we can relax in that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hack number seven is to add a touch of gold. And I don't think that'll surprise anybody <laughs> because when you think about France and a lot of times you see like French style things, things here in the US, a lot of times we associate gold things with French style. And I think that that's really fun and it just adds a little touch of glamour, but not like, I don't know. It's just some, it's an elegance. Factor. Yeah, it's a little and, ornate for that, but if it's when it's not everywhere, it doesn't feel overwhelming. Yeah, and I think they, they, a lot of times those gold mirrors or something that are just so iconic French, and I love the way that so often they'll mix them with something that's kind of modern. But they'll mix gold, they'll mix gold in through their picture frames and through their accessories, and that's just something that's I think very Parisian. Yeah. Hack number eight is that Parisians like to have their homes to actually be purposeful and practical. And it's funny because when you look at the homes that you'll see so often, there's nothing that looks practical about them, but they actually want to live in their spaces. It's kind of like what we were saying before where they have limited space, so they really need to make it count. And so they, they're very good though. Like Scandinavians, you feel that it's practical, but French, especially the Parisians, have a real knack for making it not look, they, they just, yeah. they make it look like it's not practical. It's like French fashion. My favorite French outfit in the world is a great pair of jeans and a white Oxford. And in so many places, that's a very functional outfit. In France, it's sexy. Yeah. Like, I don't know how they do it. You're just like, oh my God, that's like really sexy. Like, she looks amazing. And she's wearing a white Oxford and jeans. Yeah. And a great pair of shoes or whatever. French people are like, yeah, it's functional, but that doesn't mean it has to look functional. So I think, Yes, it has That's every the key. every bit has to be usable, but they don't want it to look like it's utilitarian. Yeah. And I think that that's something that, well, obviously, since you guys have seen my laundry room. <laughs> Very true. I think that every space should feel like something that is, is special. And they seem to really have a knack for that. But yeah, it's practical. Yes, it is utilitarian. Yes, we sit on the sofa that's in the room, but it can also be really glamorous and beautiful and amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Hack number nine is really funny to me because it totally unnerves so many people when I suggest it here. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you have to say. I know, this is crazy, right? I know. Suspense is killing us. And number nine, let your curtains pool on the floor. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> I'm telling All you. All your design friends are like. <gasps> I'm telling you, some people here are just like, you want to do what? How are we gonna hem those things? I think that's what I hear. So how are we gonna hem those things? <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> so it kind of unnerves people because again, it's imperfect. It, it's, it's tailored at the top, but it's loose at the bottom. <laughs> and it's yeah. always like the mullet of curtains. <laughs> I was gonna say that, and I thought, no, that would be wrong. <laughs> no, um, it really is, it really because is. it's so tailored at the top, and it's so beautiful, but they let it pull on the floor. Now, if I was putting them, because we're getting ready to put curtains into our bathroom, um, I probably, there, may not, I might not try to make it pull. Because first of all, you're not gonna really see the bottom, so why pay extra for fabric you're not gonna see? Um, but in the living room, if I was ever to put curtains up, I would have them pulling on the floor. In our bedroom, they pull on the floor too. And, and I 1,000% I go back to that apartment 
And then it, it, I, I had never seen it before. And I was like, oh my gosh, we, we, we talked about it. And we were touching the fabric. This lady's probably gonna be like, oh my God. <laughs> what were they doing in my apartment? <laughs> Did they literally fill up every <laughs> single thing in my house? <laughs> we were just so blown away. I had a hard time getting her to go see Paris. You didn't want to leave either. I didn't either. I was like, let's just stay here for a week. I hope yeah. it rains. I we was were, wishing we it would so rain. so inspired by it. And now that we look at Pinterest and we see these things like, we're like, oh, it wasn't just her. This was like, this was like a French woman thing. Yeah. And it was something that we just really took away. So now I see all the time that people have a pooling at the bottom. Yeah. But it's not cheap fabric. They, they really invested in incredible fabric and then they're just letting it kind of pool at the bottom. Now you wouldn't want it to be like, super long and I do kind of make mine kind of like in little little pools because <laughs> I again a perfectionist yeah. <laughs> like I can't have it like all over the floor um but they probably would they sometimes. probably would yeah but yeah isn't that funny hack number 10 is probably not going to surprise you that it's it's my absolute favorite because yeah. This is something that we learned while living overseas. We did not do this in the beginning. We no. have so much junk stored in bins downstairs that- We could open a souvenir shop. We could. For other countries <laughs> in our basement. We really could because we didn't get this. We didn't understand that when we traveled, instead of going to the souvenir shops and buying an Eiffel Tower, we realized, oh, we should buy something that we think is really beautiful that we bought in Paris and then that out. I mean, Europeans in general travel a lot. Yeah. And what they do, one of the cool things is they'll bring back. I mean, like, I love this. This. He's this a person. bus. Yeah, right? I, mean, I love carving. it. Yeah. And it doesn't say Africa on. It doesn't say you know. It's not. Doesn't blink or have blinky eyes or anything. It's just they just bring back parts from their travels and they just incorporate it. And it feels so natural. Yeah. The way they incorporate the places they've been, but also their normal Parisian life. Like it just yeah. it just flows back and forth. That's why instead now we'll buy like one beautiful little bowl and every time I look at it, you guys, I think if you've seen our my vanity tour where I do my makeup table, some of those things are from that Astier de Valette. And so we learned from watching what other people were doing, we're like, oh. Well, if we buy something that we love there, it will remind us every time we look at it. Yeah. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed yeah. this video, um, that you've maybe found a little uh, inspiration here, maybe something that you wanted to apply and try in your own house. I, I would suggest to you that if you're trying to not be perfect and you've always been perfect to go easy on yourself. Yeah, it's gonna take a while. The transition will <laughs> it might may take a while. It might unnerve you at first. Yeah. It really un unnerved me. So thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget you can always visit us at Instagram. Um, we have two accounts there that we update every day. Um, and then we also have the Inspired by V Facebook page. You can go and join as well and meet others that love to follow along and have their like minded. So it's really fun to meet everybody. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe because this is the first video in our Parisian week and there's gonna be lots more coming out and we don't want you to miss out. So until the next one, we'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>